The first week of January once saw thousands of pilgrims from around the world gather at the shrine of a Moroccan mystic buried in the Nile Delta. Now, years since the last pilgrimage and amidst the continued uncertainty of revolution-wracked Egypt, information about the shrine remains scarce. There are no reports whether this year's pilgrimage occurred, either openly or in secret. Adding to the mystery is the recent renovation of the shrine. For the past decade, a coalition of Islamists and leftists led a campaign to ban Jews from the shrine. In 2004, an Egyptian court revoked the site's historical designation, and in 2009, the pilgrimage was restricted. In 2012, it was cancelled, and 25 terrorists allegedly plotting to attack pilgrims were arrested. Last year, the anniversary passed without fanfare. The impossibility of a pilgrimage was a foregone conclusion. Lost amidst the controversy over access is the tale of the monument's occupant and his devout progeny. Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatzera was born in the 19th century and is credited with building a following on the edge of the Sahara through his spirituality and ascetic practices. Sensing his mortality, Abu Hatzera set out at an advanced age on a trek towards Jerusalem. Only making it as far as Demanhur south of Alexandria, the rabbi emerged as a figure revered by Jews as well as Muslims who deemed him a wali, or holy man. After he died of illness on January 4, 1880, his shrine soon became a pilgrimage destination on the anniversary of his death. Before the 2011 governmental ban, Jewish pilgrims to Demanhur were able to enter the actual place of burial to celebrate a festive meal, sing songs of praise and light devotional candles. Kissing the tomb, some would place a bottle of water atop the sarcophagus in belief that the rabbi's sanctity might be transferred to whoever subsequently imbibed the liquid. Yaakov's grandson Yisrael Abu Hatzera, known as the Baba Sali, the praying father, augmented his family's spiritual patrimony with an austere piety that distinguished him even within the universe of Moroccan saints. In the years prior to the Camp David Accords, the Baba Sali's home in Nitivot, Israel, served as a stand-in destination for pilgrims denied access to Damanhur. Although the shrine in Damanhur is one of the holiest sites for Moroccan and Egyptian Jews, and the festival marking the anniversary of the rabbi's death was the only commemoration dedicated to a Jewish figure in Egypt, many Egyptians view the pilgrimage to the shrine as a variation of the Joha's nail story. In one version of this folk tale, Joha sells his house to a family for a bargain, with the condition that he retain ownership of a single nail within the living room wall. Joha then insists on visiting his nail daily and at all hours until the family, sick of his constant presence and interference, left him the entire house. Such an analogy, however, is lost on would-be Jewish pilgrims who are not allowed to visit Abu Hatzera's tomb even but once per year. In the years when the pilgrimage was allowed, access at other times was still prohibited. Several years ago, a Diarna photographer went with a friend to document the site. The pair were taken to a local police station for hours of interrogation before being rushed back to the rabbi's grave. Allowed inside for all of ten minutes, just long enough to take a few pictures, they were then conveyed to Alexandria by military escort. Despite the paucity of pilgrims, paved stairs with banisters now provide easier access to the tomb, and the exterior boasts a new, uniform brick facade. Within the shrine's single room is the rabbi's tombstone, cloaked in black and adorned with a star of David. The other sarcophagi are said to be those of his students. The tomb's distinct chandelier has also been cleaned and polished. Inquiries about the renovation have gone unanswered, but there is a dedicatory plaque inside from the Rennert family. While the future of the Abir Yaakov's tombstone is uncertain, some of his possessions have made it out of Egypt. For example, the rabbi's personal prayer book still exists and is part of a private collection. Diarna obtained access to the prayer book with its special clasps, North African-styled Hebrew script, and Kabbalistic designs of psalms. It is a rare, physical example of the Abir Yaakov's enduring presence.